Last fall, I published a book on dissent and what I called the constitutional dialogue, the give and take between the majority and dissenting opinions. Brandeis, of course, led me to undertake that project, and in my biased eyes, he will always be the great dissenter. In terms of dissenting, over the course of his tenure, Brandeis wrote 454 opinions for the court and only 74 dissents, an average of a little more than three dissents a term. But oh, what dissents they are. In a minute, we will look at two areas where Brandeis' dissents determine the future course of constitutional jurisprudence. When speaking for the court, Brandeis, like all justices, had to tailor his opinions to reflect the views of the majority. Here, his work as an attorney played an important role. He had the ability, the skill, to marshal the facts and set out an interpretation of the law, sometimes a new interpretation, that commanded a majority. When writing a dissent, however, he felt no such compunction. And in those 74 dissents, we find all of Brandeis's distinguishing characteristics, attention to the context in which a law had been passed, the factual situation that the legislature had relied on, the necessity for the judiciary to defer to the legislative branch in policymaking, the attention to individual liberties, and especially the role that speech played in a democratic society.